observes ninth assembly broke many chances with the likes of the petroleum industry bill and the onshore offshore dichotomy amendment iowa new agenda calls on elected parliamentarians to support renewed hope agenda and prioritize unity and understanding plus 2023 cropping season in focus as correspondent looks at efforts of farmers to realize their dreams of achieving bumper harvests these and more on panorama today reaching your life from abuja i am elizabeth omori we'll be right back There is a time for everything for a parliamentary assembly, for inauguration and for the ninth Senate. It's time to for dissolution at the valedictory session. Senators observed that the ninth assembly broke many jinxes such as the petroleum industry bill and the onshore offshore dichotomy amendment. Ignatius and Quo tells us more. For the loss of audio in that report, but to watch out uh, in our subsequent bulletins. And bowing out of the Senate after three terms are judged as impactful. Nigeria's First Lady, Senator Luremi Tinobu, says Nigerians must look to the future with new hope, ready to match their expectations with necessary sacrifice. She was speaking at a validated recession of the Ninth Senate. Adeni Itayo reports. It is the end of the ninth senate and this valedictory session organized in keeping with tradition presents this set of lawmakers a final opportunity to take stock and do some back slapping a prominent member having served in the red chamber from the seventh assembly in 2011 to the ninth nigeria's first lady senator olua mitinumbu joins the session her last as a senator as one of the few women lawmakers at the upper chamber, Senator Olura Mitinumbu has proved a metal, working alongside her colleagues to enact laws which have now become the legacies of the Ninth Assembly. Among others, she is credited with sponsoring about eight bills, three of which have now become Act of Parliament, while co-sponsoring a number of others. She was chairperson Senate Committee on Communications during the Ninth Assembly, while she headed Senate Standing Committees on Women Affairs and the Environment at different times during the Eighth Assembly. Over the years, we've made friends. Describing her attempts at the Senate as a privilege that comes with a lot of sacrifice, the First Lady, in a valedictory remark, notes that the renewed hope promised by the new administration will become a reality with the genuine input of all Nigerians. In this room, we have the entire Nigerians being represented. And we were able to forge ahead. We we're able to come together when we need to come together to make, you know, very good decision for this nation. And we did that as good elder statesmen and women. Having produced key members of the current executives, the Ninth Assembly, the First Lady Notes, has contributed a lot to the new administration thereby becoming a good stepping stone for the 10th Senate. Anyone who doesn't have hope, you can't really move ahead. This new administration beckons that, and we have to make the necessary sacrifice, which starts with the new 10th Assembly. For me, as a woman of faith, I believe is double grace. Number 10 will give us double grace. For their contributions, the First Lady and her colleagues were presented Certificate of Service and Legacy Report by the Senate President. Like a clockwork, 12 years of service at the Senate have gone by for Senator Olure Mitinumbu. And the consensus here is that those years have been impactful to the benefit of our primary constituency, talking about Lagos Central Senatorial District and of course the nation at large. A higher calling now beckons, and that is to be the mother of all as the First Lady of Nigeria. From the National Assembly, Adeni Itaewo, NTN News. 
and the resolve to keep the bond of sisterhood in supporting women issues for national development has been made by Senator's Wives Forum. Reina Obas reports that adding up to mark the validatory session of the 9th Senate in Abuja provided opportunity for the forum to take stock on its activities to further push women to the front burner. It was a night of mixed feelings for the night senator's wives as they gathered here to pat each other at the back for playing supportive roles to their husbands who are senators of the night assembly. Some of the women here will however remain in the forum as their spouses have been re-elected to the tenth assembly. The chairman of the forum, Dr. Halima Alpha Gaya, commended the members for being good followers, stating that the forum has brought women together, inspiring many to work hard and alive to their responsibilities as mothers. The incoming tenor is indeed very fortunate to have a gender-friendly and responsive leadership as one of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu and his vice. For other members of the forum, it was a moment of joy for their position as wives left them with huge responsibilities to always bridge the gap in engagements and interactions with constituents. Because not everyone is coming back, it's also a joyful one that we've made friendship and we've become sisters along the line. The next assembly wasn't as colorful as this. The love is there, the commitment is there. We are always at each other's back. Yeah, I'm happy that it's, it was a fruitful four years, four years in sound health, in happiness, in joy. The women use the opportunity to die and wine together as it is the first time the forum is being led by elective members. In Abuja, Rina Abbas, NTA News. In other news, in a bid to foster social cohesion and national unity, the Arawa New Agenda calls on the newly elected senators and members of the House of Representatives to use the election of their principal officers as a platform to demonstrate their commitment to peaceful building. The group emphasizes the need for balanced inclusion that encompasses the diverse nature of Nigeria, transcending tribal and religious boundaries. It is therefore critical to reduce the usual acrimony that characterizes struggle for power among the geopolitical zones in a manner that will reduce unnecessary distractions and foster a peaceful and smooth takeoff of the new dispensation under President Bola Amitin. And that this is the time for national reconciliation. And in the spirit of our greater tomorrow, all parties involved in bringing about the leadership of the new dispensation need to join hands to usher in a new dam in the country on the inauguration of the 10th National Assembly. Seeing the significance of this crucial moment in Nigeria, the Iowa New Agenda also calls on the elected parliamentarians to prioritize unity and understanding. The further urged all well meaning Nigerians to extend their support to President Bola Hamid Tinubu and Vice President Kashim Shatima as they undertake the challenging task of propelling the nation forward. Meanwhile, Confederation. Confederation of All Progressives Congress, optimistic of good governance under the current administration. This was at a stakeholders up meeting ahead of the inauguration of the 10th National Assembly in Abuja. Sally Wanara reports. As the days trickle down to hours for the inauguration of the 10th National Assembly on June 13, the Confederation of All Progressives Congress support groups in a crucial stakeholders engagement appealed to the senators elect of the 10th National Assembly to perform their first task of legislative duty by bringing forward leaders that will key into the plan reforms of the new administration to sustain and promote democratic gains and accelerate the development initiative being proposed. We are all Nigerians, we are not again our thousand brothers and sisters, but fairness and equity must come to play. We will do our best through the confederation of all LBC groups and outside to make sure that Nigeria youth get jobs, they are properly engaged, they are properly educated. And now the next assignment for us at the Confederation is to make sure that the Senate, the National Assembly, is being overwhelmed by Democrats. 
that will break past laws that will help the president navigate and enshrine his purposeful adventures. The group wants stakeholders, particularly members of the 10th National Assembly, to uphold a cordial executive legislative relationship in Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi Gwanara, NTA News. In another development, the National Senior Citizens Center commends the Nigerian Television Authority for its steadfastness in projecting issues that affect all the persons in Nigeria. Ruth Aguele reports that this was attributed by the Director General, Dr. M. M. Omokaro, at a luncheon organized for its media partners in Abuja. What started like baby steps has today grown. Established in June 2021, the National Senior Citizen Center is two years old. The act that set up NSCC has a very optimistic perception of aging. In appreciation of support Some from its development partners, this luncheon is being organized for its media partners in recognition of their efforts towards projecting the activities of the center, of meeting the needs of all the persons across the country. The Nigerian Television Authority was awarded for its outstanding contributions and support in ensuring that policies that affect all the persons are disseminated effectively. Responding on behalf of NTA, the Director General, Abduhamid Dambos, who was represented by the Deputy Director News, appreciated the Center for the Honor. NTA always supports uh, whatever it is that is going to be uh, benefits to Nigeria. We feel we should support it, nurture it so that Nigerians, especially the senior citizens who have done a lot, who have put in all their productive years to serve Nigeria. In just two years, it's amazing how much awareness has been created and how people are now getting to know those issues um, regarding older persons. It's a very good uh, initiative and it will go a long way in extending the uh, I mean value of life in Nigeria. I can only appeal is for the new president and all the new state governors. They need to round up and support this program. I'm also looking forward to strengthening partnerships with the MDAs because there are many programs we can roll out by ourselves. We want to see this um, um, this sector-wide partnerships really thrive and that's the way we can really get quality help multi-sectoral help to our senior citizens. At Beyond the merriment, more is expected from the fourth estate of the REM to enable the center sustain efforts in building the capacities of older persons to achieve the national plan of action for aging in Abuja. Ruth Aguele, NT News. You're watching Panama live from Abuja. Let's take a breather now. More reports ahead. Do stay with us. You're still watching Panorama on NCA. Now to security. The Nigerian Air Force will continue to sustain air and ground momentum towards ensuring national security. The Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Oladayo Amao, stated this at the graduation ceremony of Advanced Critical Asset Protection School held at the Nigerian Air Force Base, Kaduna. Haruna Mohammed reports. Simulation of combat readiness by Advanced Critical Asset Protection Squad of the Nigerian Air Force. The special squad comprising of 10 officers, 141 airmen and women were tutored in weapon firing, night navigation, intelligence gathering, endurance and critical asset protection, as well as base defense and perimeter patrol. You are embarking for the next stage of your careers with unique skills. To meet unique challenges, you must lead to expectations. Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Oladai Amao, in a message, tax the personnel not to undermine safety and to deploy their training to defending the country in line with the rules of engagement. Nigerian Air Force has been training tirelessly, both um, in the air, on the ground, and all this is an effort to meet the contemporary security challenges. So we are always ready, able, and willing. The Critical Force Protection Squad, having undergone eight weeks of rigorous training, are now better professionally 
equipped to handle force protection contingencies of both internal and external threats. In Kaduna, I am Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. Meanwhile, Zanfra State Police Command says it is currently investigating a complaint about missing Zanfra State government's vehicles. A statement issued by the Police Public Relations Officer of the Command, Yazid Abubakar, appeals to members of the public with useful information about the missing vehicles to assist the police for the success of the investigation. The statement also notes that persons who feel the vehicles were wrongfully possessed while executing such warrants during the investigation are advised to produce proof of ownership to claim such vehicles, while stressing that members of the public will be duly informed on the outcome of the investigation. The command, however, wants people against spreading false information that can mislead the public and incite violence. The managing director of NDDC, Sam Uboko, says the commission will leave no stone unturned to ensure that projects embarked upon are completed. Jenny Bass reports that he made this known shortly after inspecting some ongoing projects in Delta State. The MD and his Management team also paid a courtesy visit on the paramount roller of Barumatu Kingdom, His Royal Highness Oboru Akitepi Agadagba in his palace as part of his working visit to the area. Projects inspected by the Managing Director, Niger Delta Development Commission include the permanent site of the Delta State Office of the NDDC, the Oborodu Escravos Water Bank, among others. The managing director NDDC, Samuel Okoku, says the commission is committed to completing all ongoing projects to add value to the lives of people of the region. He pledges the commission's readiness to partner the public and private sector to bring development to the area and also constantly evaluate the projects to see to its completion. We've all studied it here and we've all put it together. We've come up with um, measures of uh, immediate short-term and a long-term solution. I think the long-term solution is how to ensure that there is a, a short protection to protect the road, but the immediate is just to ensure that at least the road is passable for now. The paramount ruler of Baramatu Kingdom, Atekepe Agadaba, while congratulating the MD on his appointment, appeals for the completion of some projects in the area to boost economic and social life of the people. We want our region, Niger Delta, to be developed, uh, not to experience uh, uh, uncompleted or abandoned or cancelled projects. Earlier, the MD and management team on arrival visited the Delta State Office of the NDDC to familiarize with staff of the commission, where he promised them of a better and improved welfare. From Okboroza, Delta State, Jenny Bassi, NTA News. To agriculture, Nigeria's quest for food sufficiency and security could only be achieved if best agronomy practices are adopted by all stakeholders in the agricultural sector and value chain. For this, the new administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinobu has left no one in doubt as to his resolve to improve food production and affordability. Elias Tiav looks at efforts by farmers in realizing their dreams of achieving bumper harvests. Benue, like its neighboring states of Taraba and Nasara, boast of the production of food and cash crops even in commercial quantities. With the 2023 cropping season already picking up, farmers have resumed several farming activities with the usual high expectations of stepping up productivity and adding value to their efforts. Because things in the market are high, you cannot expect the farmer to go and purchase fertilizer in, in high price. For herbicide that was sold about 2000 this year, the least you can get for good ones is about 4000 naira. Though with the lofty dreams of achieving proper harvest, these farmers are most often faced with the challenges of timely access to farming inputs such as fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides as well as a high cost of tractors for purposes of expansion. Uh, what we had government to do is for farming green security to stay so that then we secure the farms people. Sometimes we buy we can buy a fertilizer and you came to understand that the whole of the this thing is just a uh, sand. The government should make sure that they handle the issue of fertilizer itself 
instead of giving it out to the people that bring normally brings the, the bad one to farmers. These farmers are expectant that President Bola Ahmed Chinibu's government will match well with actions in ensuring the timely supply of farming inputs and checking sharp practices in the agricultural industry to provide the enabling environment in Makudi. Elias, ETF, continues. And next is sports updates. Meanwhile, Man, Man, Man City's top players will be paid more than two million in bonuses. And that concludes Panorama today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Elizabeth Omori. Good afternoon.